In this video we're going to have a look at the Python class. Before we look at the Python class in code, let's look at it schematically. Here you can see we have a schematic diagram to represent a class. And there are three things we're really interested in. We're interested in a class name, we're interested in attributes and methods of the class. Let's reflect this structure onto a example. Let's take the example of a bank account. We want to write a program that controls the movement of money into and out of a bank account. In which case a sensible name for this particular class would be bank account. Now if you notice I've capitalized the B and I've capitalized the A here. Now that's standard practice. When naming classes in Python you use what's called camel casing. And that basically means you capitalize the first letter of each word. So you can see the B of bank has been capitalized and the A of account has been capitalized. Now a typical attribute of a bank account would be its balance. How much money there is in the account at any particular time. And of course you could have £100 in or you could have minus £10 in meaning you were overdrawn. But that's a typical attribute. Now a typical method could be debit. This is where you decide to withdraw some money and you have a method that allows that withdrawal to take place and it debits the balance. So here a method would actually reduce the balance by however much you were deciding to withdraw from the bank account. Let's put the example of a bank account to one side for a moment and let's look at this generically. What we're going to have is the class and the name of the class is as shown here, class name. And if I now wanted to create an instance of this class, in other words an object of this class, in Python code, this is how you would do it. You would choose an appropriate name and I've just chosen my instance one here and that is assigned and if you look here you can see that I've got the word class name because that is the name of the class and I've got two brackets following it and what this is going to do it's going to create an instance of this particular class. Let's now model this against the execution space. Here we can see the execution space and what we're doing with this program statement here, we're creating an object where this object is based on the class. And if we look at the object, you can see that at its center, I am going to have attributes and round the outside, I'm going to have methods. So the attributes that are declared here in the class will appear here in the center of the object. And the methods that are declared here will appear on the outside of this particular object. Now let me stress this is a model and the reason I show attributes in the center and the methods on the outside is I like to try and show what is meant by encapsulation. What I've really got here are the attributes in the middle surrounded by the methods to represent an important keystone of object oriented program and that's something referred to as encapsulation. And that is essentially where you have all of the program statements and all of the variables grouped together within an object. And how these attributes and methods are within the object is defined by the class. So for example, if here we had seven attributes, we'd have seven attributes here. If this had five methods, then we'd have five methods here. That's what I'm trying to represent with this particular diagram. Now, of course, this particular object is going to have the name my instance. And of course, this name has come from here in the code. And this object I know is based on this class because I'm using this here. My instance is assigned class name with those two brackets. When you're reading round the subjects of classes and objects, you will often come across the following words, states. Now states are really another word for attributes. And we've also got methods and another word for methods are behaviors. In other words, an object has behaviors and it has states. And these behaviors and states are defined inside the class. 
you will also often hear the following terminology applied to classes and objects and that is members and what we're really saying here is that attributes and methods are members of the class and they are also members of the object because if they're members of a class they're going to appear in the object because the object was based on the class so what we have here is the class and here we have the object and the object is based on the definitions that appear in the class in other words the class is the template from which objects are created and in an object orientated program we're really interested in the objects that appear in the execution space because what happens is these objects send each other messages and each object performs tasks for other objects and we'll come on to look at that kind of arrangement a little bit further into this playlist when we look at Python code an attribute is essentially a variable and a method is program statements grouped together in what we've already seen earlier in the playlist and that is a function now a function when it appears declared within a class is referred to as a method let's now move over to look at a program that has a class within it and what we can see here we have a very straightforward program and this is the class and a class consists of a clause and this line is the clause and you can see it begins with the word class which is a word that belongs to the Python language and I've chosen this as the name of the class demo class and again note the camel casing there and here you can see I've got a colon now you've seen this colon many times in the previous videos in the playlist now in this area you put the suite now what we mean by the suite is the Python code and that's where we put our variables that's where we put our program statements and we'll be looking at a class that has variables and program statements later in the playlist but here you can see that I've just put this word pass and you can see that that's clearly indented for spaces which is what you always have when you have structures within the Python language you always indent for now this pass well it's simply something that's useful to us when we're programmers it's a statement which is a null operator and nothing happens when it's executed now this particular pass is useful in places where your code will eventually go but has not yet been written and for example when I write a system I might have 10 classes that I'm going to use and I produce my stubs and I say right well I've got the need for 10 classes I'll put the word pass here and I'll come back and I'll fill the code in later but the reason I'm using it here I cannot think of a simpler class than this one it's just the clause in other words the first line of the class and you can see the suite ie where the program code is is just one statement so it makes the understanding of the class pretty straightforward now I have to say it's a pretty useless class because it ain't doing anything for me there's no code there for it to do anything or so it would appear but here I'm using something as simple as possible to introduce you to our first programmer defined class now remember when you declare a variable you do something like x is assigned one you're actually using a class there because one is an integer the x is bound to an integer object and that integer object is based on the integer class and this is an example of a programmer class this is something I'm responsible for producing when you use integers Python has already produced the integer class for you and of course you've got a float class you've got a list class there are classes for everything but here we're looking at a class that I'm responsible for coding and you can see it don't do much so here's the class and if we now go to this particular line you can see it's my instance one is assigned demo class now what that does it creates an instance of the demo class in other words an object whose type is demo class now if we look at the runtime for this 
and we'll go through each program statement in turn let's look what happens here well we know we're going to get the execution space and what this is going to do it's going to create an object and this object is going to be labeled with my instance one we've produced an instance of this class this is an object of this class if we look at this line what this is going to do is going to print the type of my instance one and if we look at the outputs we can see it tells us that it's a class of the demo class the name I gave to the class was demo class now here you can see you've got underscore underscore main underscore underscore we'll ignore that for the time being I'll come back to what that means a little bit later but here we're going to print the ID of my instance one and if we look at the output we can see that produces that particular ID if I now come onto this line well this is going to produce an instance of the demo class and I'm going to show that in the execution space as shown here and of course that will now be labeled with my instance 2 and of course what I'm now going to do is to print the type of this instance using this statement here and of course this tells us that it's class of type demo class in other words it's an instance of the demo class and here I'm going to print the ID of my instance too and you can see that gets printed here now just look at both of these IDs you can see they're different well they should be because I've got two different objects but the thing is these objects are based on the same demo class this one here so this is the class and these are the objects based on that particular class these are instance these objects of this class now the thing to realize here is that these objects exist in their own right they're based on the same class but they become instances of that class and they're both independent of each other check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the youtube channel and the google plus circle that relates to these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video